And we're live. I'm Ethan McKinley, actor and comedian. Uh, I'm here, of course, my lovely co-host. Gerps Chima, just comedian, arguably so. I'm, uh, Very arguably. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm not the one who bombed in Manchester. And the, I'm not oh, going to bring right, that up. That's it. I'm not going to bring that up. Uh, this is, of course, uh, a new web show for us. Uh, we're going to have a lot of uh, different guests on, different comedians and stuff. Uh, in the meantime, this is kind of an experimental show. Uh, slash podcast slash YouTube show where we talk about various things various things that we haven't really planned for so it's just a conversation between two comics yes uh, maybe three we'll have a three way one day not yet we're working on that <laughs> with, uh, a, with a mixed race with a mixed race because you're an Indian I'm a, I'm a cowboy <laughs> Mr. So what? The pl- okay, we call this the <laughs> comedy garage but the original title was supposed to be the cowboy and the Indian me obviously being the cowboy yes and then which I think is a good title the cowboy and the Indian. Obviously, yeah, he's going to represent uh, the Indian community, the Native American. Sorry, didn't mean to be racist there or offend anyone. I'm woke. Yeah, we need to stop uh, second guess. You're okay. You can say racist stuff. You're I a, can. You're, I can. You're okay. I'm the, I'm the only person that can't like you know say anything derogatory because of my colonialist past. I don't. You know what? I, I don't think I can either because I've offended someone in the past, right? But then <laughs> have, I've been, okay, have you? Probably have. Some people are offended by you know. My face. I'm offended by your face. I know you are. Uh, that's, that's what I was looking at you, you <laughs> once I said that. Uh, but no, okay, listen, if someone's going to be offended, fuck them. I, you can't, I'm not going to do anything about it. You can fuck off, you can't. Well, I think that it's, has offended uh, someone. Yeah, I think people should worry less about offending people and other people should worry about less about how they react to things because I think everyone's a bit oversensitive now, aren't they? I agree. But on tonight's show, we're going to discuss the hard hitting questions that are. Making a porno in a miniature golf club or a crazy golf club, right? Yeah, the ghetto golf club. I that's mean, the one. I mean, we'll you know what? That. That's, that's the first time someone's actually had fun at mini golf. How dare you? I oh. love mini golf. Do you Bo- really? Real golf, boring, right? Like crazy golf, amazing. When but then say, again, yeah, I'm 19 years What is it old. in Italy, right? You say crazy golf or mini golf? I think. Because here it's crazy golf. If it's not actual golf, yeah. right? Like if it's like, you know, hitting a ball into a castle and there's a clown How or whatever. How dare you that's, accuse golf of being crazy? That's crazy golf. Okay. So then again... Well, in England, we call it crazy... Sorry, Gerps is from Italy, right? Where are you from, Gerps? Let's I'm from... Okay. I'm Asian, originally. That's... Uh, you can tell by my complexion. Uh, but I am originally from Italy. I was uh, born and raised in Italia. Actually, I, I wasn't born in Italy. I was born in India by... Ke- you've, I read, uh, you've read pasta and curry sauce? I have actually. I tried that. I, I was tempted to make it once. Uh, not good. I would not recommend. Is it not that. good? No, I tried this. I like curry sauce and, and you, curry. And you like pasta? I like pasta. Mix them up. Mix them up. Uh, I guess so. But then again, you know, I, I like Jeff Goldman and I like woman. That was a bad example. It was a bad example. <laughs> it? I, was, uh, so I thought it would lead up to something. And then in tonight's show, we are going to come up with, of course, uh, crazy golf. Having making a porno in a crazy golf course, we're going to get to that. Uh, I watched the six-part opus that is uh, Surviving R. Kelly, the the six-part documentary that details his serial, not even serial womanizing, his serial underage sex, sex cult, sex slavery ring that he's running, and not one person has really said a word. They tried to convict him in two thousand eight. Little stories have leaked out here and there. And yet, even now, this man is untouchable, even by the Baptist community where he emerged from, uh, from the R&B community. No one has said a word. Is it because he's black? Is it because the black community reacts differently to things like we've discussed before the show, GURPS, that Rihanna was, of course, beaten up by Chris Brown? Yes, OJ as well. OJ, yeah. yeah. But then again, I, okay, listen. Does the, 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 the glove fit? You must acquit. So, I don't know. We, the next thing we're going to talk about is uh, some movies. We're going to cover three things in this show. Just as a little test. Yeah, obviously. And they make sense as well, right? Uh, poor nose, uh, R. Kelly, and movies. Ex- what's not to love about that? Exactly. That's the perfect podcast. But the thrust of this documentary I watched last night was because people like you mentioned quite rightly, Louis C.K. gets into trouble for okay. masturbating in front of a willing participant I... in 2003. Okay, the- R. Kelly literally statutory rapes <laughs> controversial uh, <laughs> these uh, alleged alleged underage girls right and all these people have come forward and yet the, the uh, community at large the community has not really said anything and the question is do Why? we treat our people differently do they view the girls as perhaps not a victim as more of a protagonist versus 
where it's more down to him. My question is, does it come down to him being talented? Could it be that as well? He's very talented. Exactly. That, that's my argument with Louis C.K. I, I, I mean, despite what he's done, <laughs> right? We'll let I him off. I still like fine. his comedy. So I, I still <laughs> watch his stand-up. You know, it's like Patrice O'Neill's got a joke about that. Like, can I still watch? Can I still listen to Thriller after what Michael Jackson's uh, there's done? There's a new comedian on tonight, Gerps. Oh, is he any good? Yeah, he's right. How many people has he raped? Well, quite a few, but he's more That's funny. not the point. He's, he's more funny than he's a rapist. <laughs> yeah, it comes <laughs> down to that. It's like, he rapes, but he's funny, so... Yeah, uh, you know what? I think you need to watch uh, <laughs> this documentary. It, I mean, honestly, it's mind-blowing. It's not like... He's famous and therefore young girls want to sleep with him. That's a given if you're a rich or famous person. This guy is taking it to an almost whole new level. And if the documentary is correct, he's got this house, right? Yeah. And there's a different girl in every room. And they're locked in there in the dark. They have to do a wee-wee in a bucket. And like they're only going to... Is that because he gets turned on by that or just need? Well, because, yeah, because he likes the bit of wee-wee, doesn't he? He, he, old, he old loves Kelly. wee-wee, doesn't he? <laughs> That's his favourite thing. Was the the Chappelle? What was the Chappelle uh, show? Uh, the Chappelle song? show, yeah. What's the name of the song though? I'm gonna piss on it. I, I can't remember. <laughs> show me your face, cause I'm gonna piss on it. That's the. Okay, can I? Show... Okay, I, I did need to point something out though. Okay. So before we hit the record button, yes, we did say let's Hopefully not get we controversial. Hit the button. Let's not get controversial. Let's just ease into it. Well, this isn't it. controversial, you see, because I think. A lot of famous people have come out and spoken out against this, but the actual communities he's come from uh like jada pinkett smith has come out and said uh he's bad john legend said he's bad uh neo the r&b singer is bad whereas everyone else in the industry uh has kind of remained silent for many many years okay and the, the question of the documentary and this is a black documentary it's not me don't say that <laughs> but <I'm What>? just... <laughs> he's a black documentary well because if it was I a white documentary friends. commenting on this it would be a different angle wouldn't it and i what they're saying is do we treat our people differently? Do they kind of, because they, these are young black women, no one gives a shit. Neo says this, this is a quote from him. Whereas if it was a bunch of white women that are getting, uh, you know, statutory raped over many, many years, serially to almost a, a pathological level by R. Kelly, uh, it will be a much different story because it's young black women. No one seems to give a shit. And that includes the black community. I guess it could come down to that. It could be down to that. But at the same time, the times have changed. See, I've unfortunately... People are woke nowadays. So <laughs> because it's white black woman, I think they would care more. Like, that's what... You I think would, so? I would think that, so, yeah, That's exactly. what the, the people in the dark are going, how is this not a thing? How is no one saying anything? It, dude, it's mind-blowing. You need to watch it. I've, I've yeah, sprung I, on you. I haven't you. seen the actual documentary. <laughs> I, I did see, like, the events on floor, like, with that TMZ clips as well. They yeah. actually interviewed one of the black girls. On well, like, she, she was like the house mama. And she's the one that kind of, R. Kelly said it himself, you, you, you're going to get trained by this girl. And there's a girl that lives in the house. She's like his best girl. And she has sex like with the girl. Like bitch. And cut, okay. Yeah, and like breaks them in. I, it, it, <laughs> like, I couldn't believe like, it. <laughs> I'm thinking the casting couch to a new level. The casting house, not the, the casting couch. The house, yeah. Oh my God. What, did they get trained and shit? Yeah, this that's g- like a job. This girl it? meets him at the airport when they think they're going to meet R. Kelly. Then they take him out to his house, diddle them. That's making things worse. Like, it's like a job. If I'm going to get raped, I don't want that to be like a job. Well, it's fucking girl. It's kind of this psychological breakdown, but it's quite indicative that this happens in many. Co- that's what I'm saying. It's a sex cult because, like, David Koresh kind of did it okay. in the Waco incident. You won't remember that's from 1993. He claimed he was Jesus and then started sh- 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 shagging everyone's wife. But weird. <laughs> Uh, there's there's <laughs> elements that? of the Moonies to this uh, Scientology Jehovah's Witnesses where they kind of like lock people off from the world. You can't speak to anyone outside the in the outside world, like your parents, like your family. This girl didn't speak to her family for three years. They were still trying to find her in the last episode of this documentary. Okay. Oh, Gerps, you've got to watch it. It's it's bonkers. It, it really is. It's mad. It's on the list. I'm gonna get to it eventually. <laughs> uh, they're making a new documentary about Michael Jackson as well. That's in the uh, in the works. Michael Jackson. <laughs> you make so, a documentary about. I don't think he did it. I got a disease. I got vertigo. My skin's going white. <laughs> <laughs> that is trans talk right there. Don't. I mean, uh, he, you know, he, he saw himself as a white man. There's nothing wrong with well, that. Well, he wanted to look like Diana Ross. Not Diana Ross, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor. I think Diana Ross was his initial inspiration. No, yeah. He wanted to look like Diana Ross. And I think Elizabeth Taylor was one of his best friends. I but mean, Is this leading up to a joke? No. I don't believe it. Michael you. Jackson legit had an obsession with Diana Ross. And all the surgeries, allegedly, uh, because he wanted to look more like Diana Ross. 
Okay. That is not a joke. That is absolutely, I think, true. So that's transgender and transracist at the same time. I li- yeah. In progressive, in it. Pro- that's very progressive. There's also another theory that they've discussed on the Joe Rogan show that Michael Jackson was a castrati. Do you know what a castrati is? I don't know what a castrati is. Being from Italy and half Catholic slash... I wonder Catholic seek you well a castrati basically they take uh, choir boys who sing very high and they cut the balls off before they get to puberty so they retain that uh, very high voice called a castr- castration castrati okay so it's got to do with castration and in right. fact there's recordings back in the day of castratis like grown men who have had the nuts cut off but have remained had this remained with this choir boy voice that is amazing. there's a theory that Michael Jackson is a castrati Joe so Jackson whoosh, with the little Jackson nuts off. I don't believe that, though. I don't believe how do you it. How you explain Blanket, his kid? What, uh, b- well, Blanket that was white. His two children are white. Well, were they not? They were his kids, right? <laughs> no, I don't think they were. What? <laughs> I don't think Michael Jackson's kids were... Uh, this is your clip for YouTube, by the way. I don't think his kids were his kids. Well, they were in adoption sense, Yes. And I think... No, gen- uh, uh, genetically speaking, they must have been his kids. I don't think they were. Do you not? Did he yeah. adopt them? Yeah, I think so. Come on, fuck my wife. No, oh, what, a random God, God, what documentary was it now? The woman that was married to him that allegedly had the, bl- the kids said they weren't... I didn't have them, I don't think. They were trying to find a sperm donor. I've not seen it for like a while. But so Michael Jackson has no balls, and his kids weren't his. I, th- I think the Castrati story is probably not true. That's my theory. It could be true because his voice is. I mean, it's very distinct, if you kick very him high. In the bollocks. That's what it probably sound like. Yeah. Thriller. Hee <laughs> hee. <That's laughs> so yeah, I don't. I, I wouldn't. Have, it's probably one of my least uh, credible conspiracies that Michael Jackson is a Castrati. However, I think. Well, look. If we had the internet in this freaking garage, I could. If we looked oh, at blanket come on, it's and the, the other comedy girl. garage, we don't need the internet. We fucking do right now. But we are. That's the not the point. That's despite the point. We are the internet. I am the no, I'm the. I'm the I'm <clears throat> encyclopedia of filth. Oh, you've seen blank, blanket and the little girl. Yeah. Two children. I think there's two or three, two, right? I don't know. There's I a girl really... and a boy, but basically they're white, which is fine. But he was saying... <laughs> a black man can have Katie white, white kids. That's fine. That's allowed. It's allowed. Yeah. No, but I don't... Biologically, they're not his, no. I think he adopted them. So hang on. Uh, which begs the question, are they allowed to use the N-word? Because they're... Because they're, <laughs> they're in the black. Jackson... Yeah, exactly. The Jackson 7 now. Yeah. Or the Jackson 6. I, uh, I don't know. I think they are. I don't think they'd use that in the Jackson household. They're not? I think Jermaine Jackson might. He was a bit spicy. I think Michael Jackson would be really offended if he called him. Like, yeah. I'm not. <laughs> and then he'd become like, really racist as well. I don't like them. <laughs> Send them. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Uh. I don't think... I don't think the Jack... I think Joe Jackson would have. He was a bit of a rough guy. The, 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 t- the hard taskmaster father, I think. So, yes. Uh, <clears throat> that was an interesting conversation about Michael Jackson having no balls. And... No. That's Just like thing. you. But that's a different... <laughs> okay, we... Uh, I thought you said we weren't going to get into that, okay? Not yet, anyway. Dave is a lovely guy. Dave is a lovely guy, by the way. Uh, by the way, there that. was talk, Vagabonds, the Thirsty Night Comedy Extravaganza. I, uh, I suggested to them they have roast battles there because it will get people to come and watch, okay. right? And also having a, a no material night where people just you pull stuff out of the hat you and you're what? given a card. I'd be scared to do that. I do rely on my material quite a lot. I wouldn't because I'm better unprepared. Are I you think though? Are you though? Mm, yes, what? you are. I prepare inside out and backwards, so my my act is tight, but I'm much better in the moment, so I think I would love to do... I agree. Give me a card, I think you get on stage and you do it. And also, I think Rose Battle would help up up the numbers of people coming to watch yeah, I think Vagabonds. I agree. You should never prepare because we drove up to Manchester... And it was like a three, two and a half hour drive. And for two and a half hours, you were rehearsing your bit over and over again. <laughs> I do. And then you went on stage, gunged off. Yeah. So Having said that, though, you used to say, wow, you're really good on stage. You're very tight. Your performance is great. It's only was only good because I knew the words inside out and backwards. My argument against what I was doing is 
and which was what the James Cook said and other people have said you have a framework of ideas and you just talk about it on stage which is the right thing to do because okay. then it comes out as conversational yeah but I think there's also something to be said about that George Carlin-esque wordplay where you've got something rehearsed in your head pretty rehearsed so well that you can because if someone heckles you I think sometimes it can spin you out of a prepared piece but if you know it's so well oh yeah well, I agree definitely because most of my pieces are prepared and if Anything yeah. happens, like you saying, oh, he's bugging, bumming. That f- throws me off right away. Yeah. Which you have done many times. I asked him to film my sets, and when I actually go back and watch it, it's just him talking over my bit. No, that was that one <laughs> where you, he was bombing on one of his sets, right? So I was in the corner of the phone going, this is Gab's bombing. <laughs> <laughs> you know they say you learn And he posted me. it on Facebook. I did, because it's funny. What a masochist. And... But I think it comes down to the way people see you. I'm a fat, chubby, little Indian guy. Are you, Gerbs? I am. They say the camera adds 20 pounds as well. (laughs) Fuck off. Uh, There's also posture, the way you sit, the way you carry yourself. You can hide a multitude of sins. Could you really? Yeah. Let's do a 101 101, I can't even talk. Okay, a 101 course on how not to look fat. (laughs) (laughs) That's the title of this video now. Gerps, um, bless you, I love you, but I don't think you'd pass the course. <laughs> I, I mean, how to look fat. Oh, no, you'd pass the course. Yeah, exactly, I'd pass that course. From that. But I, you, are you fine as you are? What is this, like, panic? To, well, not panic, this actually, drive to I lose say, weight? I wouldn't say it's panic. No, it's the wrong word. I take it back. I'm sorry, I didn't mean panic, but this kind of, like, urge to kind of, you know, I've got to lose Be weight. Be healthy. I don't know. You live longer as a healthy person. I don't want to be known. Yeah, but as Dennis Leary said, it's the years at the end. It's the last 10 years, the worst ones. Who gives a shit about those? Yeah, but these it's are the not ad- my last 10 years. I fucking hope not, anyway. It's the adult nappy years. Yeah, but still, I'd rather be there, you know, because I'm afraid of death. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Okay, let's move on. Let's talk about anything else. Why? Now this is good. We're getting digging deep on the GURPS here. On the, I don't know. I'm, I'm really afraid of death because I'm not religious. I wouldn't say I'm religious. I get spiritual every now and again when I'm high, but I'm not religious. I'm spiritual. I was really high once. My dead father, he's dead now, but he's not. he wasn't there. I couldn't see him, but I felt him. And then we all hand out crystals and it was amazing. And I think I'm possessed by the devil. Is that what I sound like right now? No. Okay, good. Fucking hell. I got but just people that say I'm spiritual. I thought I was I'm not religious, in a mirror. I'm spiritual. I thought I was looking in a mirror right there. One of those like slimming mirrors. But uh, yes, I am... Uh, Do I look like a thin Indian? How dare you? That's not offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, dude. But no, okay, I'm afraid of death because I'm not religious and I don't think there's anything after you die. So it's like going back like what happened before you were born. Well, there may not be anything after you die. Exactly. There's not going to be anything after I die. And, you know, before I was born, I didn't really like that. I mean, there could be. Yeah, I mean, I wish I could become a ghost. I'd love that. I, I'd be a really, really pervy ghost, I think. No, I wouldn't really. I wouldn't. You feel like a ghost to me. You Thanks. always there. I get, you know what, I'm a ghost Oh, there's on, another text. I'm a ghost oh, on... <laughs> it's 1pm. Gertz must be on his lunch. He's uh, bored. I'm a ghost on Tinder because people ignore me. <laughs> oh, oh, Gertz. Oh. Come on, you're not that no. bad. <laughs> Thanks for that. Tell that to my Tinder matches. I mean, I wouldn't sleep with him, but that's just me. Uh, yeah, is Gerbs, that because you're not gay? As there is... Uh, no, I don't think so. I mean, I'm gay in the Victorian sense of the word. I don't get that. Reference. I know. Well, the original word gayness or being gay like was an old timey word from Victorian t- Victorian England. Okay. If someone was happy or jolly or skipping down the street, they go, oh, look at him, he's so gay. So that was How it fu- turned into bumming men, I have no <laughs> idea. I guess that's jolly and being, you know, happy. Who cares? Who cares? I don't, I don't care. Come on, man. I don't care about anything. Uh, I just told you my darkest, deepest fears, which is death. As we had no structure to this show, Gerps, and I think we started off with a controversial subject, sorry. But uh, another fine. thing you mentioned before we started recording was uh, someone made a porno at a mini golf venue. Where is yes, this? Yes, that has happened. So um, I went to a work night out in to uh, get a golf in uh, Digbeth. That's in Birmingham. Yeah, yeah. I know where that is. And uh, yeah, I was scrolling through Facebook and apparently they made a hardcore porno there. Like proper hardcore shit. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> watched it yet. Uh, I will do a, a live reaction to it. 
but yeah, that's... When was this done? Did they... T- the people that own the golf course said? Yeah, they... It was pretty much... Yeah, so they, if they worked at the golf course, would they be It was like to behind be- their backs, like, what the fuck? No, I know that. You have to <laughs> What's book happening it? at our golf club? You'd have to book it out and stuff, but like... Uh, with the people, because usually if it, with a porn shoot, how do I know this? It's a closed set, so everyone's no one can just walk in. If you no, no you could. It was locked off by that. Yeah, they, they shot in. The but I was going to say, if you worked at the golf club, you'd be like, "Can I sneak in and watch?" Yeah, I think. But the thing is, I'm the one who got fucked there because ten pounds for a ticket. That is a bloody disgrace to your the, people. Yeah, exactly. That's like <laughs> disgrace to my people and culture. That's the Indian part of me jumping in. No, but. Birmingham is bloody expensive. It's not as expensive as London, but that's a big misconception. I went. It's getting to, more expensive. It's get definitely because I went to a restaurant in Birmingham and they charged nine ninety nine for a one one and a half li- liter of Coke. No, it's in a joke. It's nine ninety nine for that. No, how, how mad is that? Really? I, I'm not even lying. Well, what's the liter? Is it two points? Three points? A liter and a half. It's like one of those two pound bottles from Aldi. Okay. Aldi. Where was li- this? Uh, I'm not gonna say. Yeah, so I'm this, not gonna is, say because I'm this a Jimmy Spices on Broad Street, Birmingham. Because I that's one of my favorite restaurants. I'm cheap, <laughs> uh, but you're saying <laughs> it's not. It's not Jimmy Spices on Broad you, Street. He went to a restaurant. Basically, his cousin owns a restaurant. Yes, Jimmy Spices, Broad Street, Birmingham. You know, I'm blurring that right now, right? I think it's a great place. It's one of my favorite places. Is it really? Eat. It really is. Okay. And I didn't know you. I said this first. You went, my cousin is. I was like, really? That's amazing. My cousin-in-law, like. But it's a, around the world food, right? You can. It's like a food court. You can, oh, this is how unclassy I am. You can have like Mexican, Indian, Chinese, right? You can have all kinds, yeah. All kinds. And you think Jimmy Spice is expensive. <laughs> it's £20 a head, right? You pay 20 quid? 15, 15 quid. And you can eat anything you want as much as you want? Yes. Come on. When are we going to go? Exactly. You know what? Uh, I take that back. I don't think it's a rip-off. And I think... We should all go He's there. He's on camera now. Your cousin, my cousin's restaurant's <laughs> yeah, on a ripoff. Mate, I got worried. I, I should like... be your, if you're watching this, cuz, <laughs> we should be cousins, because I love your restaurant. I even know he knew you. I've been to Jimmy Spice's loads. <laughs> I'm telling you. Mate, honestly, as soon as he mentioned I was just like, oh shit, I need to back down now. And not, <laughs> it was a different restaurant, by the way, the 9 99 uh, for a, uh, for yeah, a which, one, a which, the other, which was the other restaurant, Gerbs? I'm not gonna say. It's not gonna say. <laughs> no it's pressure. It wasn't. In fact, it's. You know what? I'm gonna cut down to like my face. Next time he goes to that restaurant, I'm gonna be outside the window going through the office window to his cousin going, Gabs, take your restaurant. Uh, they can't hear that. So uh, he's saying that it's the greatest restaurant ever in Birmingham. So if you're <coughs> visiting Birmingham, uh, please go to Jimmy Spice's great restaurant, great plug. Um, bit expensive, but I like it. Exactly. And you're welcome for bringing this up. On £73 for four? Yeah, 77 for four people. Okay. But that's 77 for four people, cocktails, that's... Like yeah. A jug of... 15, 15, yeah, so 60 for four people to eat for 15, 15 pounds of food. Yes, and then you got like a £7 service charge. But seven that pounds is... You know what? <coughs> you, they don't have to charge that. You can take that off your bill now. I know. And working in restaurants, I hate people that do that because it's rock hard working in a restaurant. And not, you know what people do in restaurants? Normally they go, oh, take the service shop. We'll give, we'd rather give you cash. So you take the service off. Sometimes it's like 20 quid. And they leave you a pound. And you think, <laughs> no, you so I'm going, do you get money from the service it. charge? If you're working in a restaurant. Some re- Well, back in the day, yes. I used to work in a restaurant called Ipanema in Birmingham. Okay. And I used to get paid by the hour. Plus you kept your tips. And you got this all the service charge. I was making one week. I made uh, a grand and a half in a week. Back I back. averaged about nine hundred pounds a week. Jesus Christ! But another restaurant I worked in. Well, weirdly, restaurants twigged onto the fact: hey, we can keep half the service charge. They used to start keeping half. Then they start keeping half your tips. Then some places would only pay you two pounds an hour, and they use the tips to make it up to minimum wage. And that's when I got out of the restaurant business. That's fucked up, though. Oh, like, it is. You've got to pay your full wage. Yeah. You can't just rely on the customers. Also, by the way, I can't. I, I wish I could say to the guy, oh, take the service charge off, but I can't because I'm ashamed of doing that. It well, get I, don't know. It's a, it's a, I know it doesn't look like it, but being a waiter or waitress or working a bar is really fucking hard. Yeah, you, have to definitely. Be th- you have to be thinking about multiple things at the same time and make sure people are happy. Yeah. Uh, Gerbs, before we wrap up, uh, have you seen Aquaman? I haven't, not yet. Have you seen anything new at the cinema recently? No, I'm planning on watching that uh, Laurel, Laurel and Hardy movie. 
Stan and Ollie. Stan and Ollie. And I'm planning on watching the new Kevin Hart and... Brian Cranston in a wheelchair. That's the one. Which is the remake of the French film, whatever it was called, I can't remember. And the black guy in it played Bishop in X-Men Days of Future Past. Sorry. That sums it all up, innit? Followed by a burp. <laughs> so, you've got anything else to say in this fledgling test episode we've done, Gerbs? No, I don't actually. So, follow me. My name is Gerbs Chima. Follow me on Instagram. It's at Gerbs Chima. And you can follow me on, or not follow me, subscribe to this YouTube channel. You can subscribe to my own YouTube channel, which is Gerbs Chima. And Ethan, do you have anything to say for yourself? Uh, yes, you can find me at ethanmckinley.com. You can find me on Instagram at emcq1. And if you like this show, which you, pr- you probably don't and you haven't got this for anyway, but if you are still listening <laughs> to this, uh, I discuss movies in depth on a show on Podmatic and Podbean called Was It Worth It? where I discuss and break down the latest movie releases and some classics with my friend Toffer, who's going to be shortly uh, a guest on this show. So uh, there we have it, folks. Thank you for watching. We shall return in another episode shortly. I've been Ethan McKinley. I've been Gopes Chima, an arguably good comedian from the Midlands. Very arguably. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye now.